Alright troops, it's your man Chris Scullion from TyrolHack.com and Nintendo have just announced that some SNES games are coming to Switch Online uh, to celebrate it reaching its kind of one year anniversary. Um, so since I'm in the process of writing the SNES Encyclopedia which is out in spring 2020, I figured there's no better person to explain uh, each of these 20 games and um, give you a kind of rundown of uh, which ones you may want to try out first uh, when they launch. Probably out by the time you watch this to be honest. Um, so yeah, let's get cracking. First up is Brawl Brothers. It's a beat em up. It's a sequel to Rival Turf, which is another SNES game, but not one of these kind of initial 20 games you're going to get on Switch Online. Um, it's a pretty cool beat em up. Um, it's got a weird thing called Angry Mode, uh, which you can turn on and off in the options, which basically means if, as always happens in beat em ups, if you get stuck in a kind of loop where an enemy or two enemies have got you in a corner and they're kicking the shit out of you. Um, you can kind of suddenly become angry, which means you get invincible and you can break out of it, uh, which is useful. Um, it's also got a weird kind of sewer level fairly early on in the game, which um, didn't kind of explain to players at the time that it was actually a maze, um, meaning anyone who doesn't know that will just keep playing it endlessly forever. Um, so bear that in mind when you play it. You might want to consult a walkthrough or something uh, just for information on how to get out of that, but once you get out of that, it's, it's fine, it's a fun game. Um, so yeah, it's worth a look if you're into beat em ups. Uh, then there's Breath of Fire, which is a RPG by Capcom. Uh, but Capcom seemingly didn't have much faith in it because they weren't going to bring it out in the West, but Square kind of took it and translated it and published it in the West. So it's published by Square, but developed by Capcom. Um, you're a guy called Ryu who's a member, not that Ryu, not the Street Fighter one, different one. Um, who's a member of the Light Dragon Clan. Um, and his sister gets kidnapped by the Dark Dragon Clan, which is kind of uh, genius and cleverly named. Um, so you have to go and rescue her, but it turns out you also realise, oh, you can turn into a dragon, which is useful. Um, so you go and rescue her, and yeah, along the way you kind of um, add other people to your party who can also turn into creatures like a mole or a fish or a snake. Um, it's a really cool RPG, it's got kind of quite a team behind it as well. Uh, the characters are designed by Keiji Inafune, who did Mega Man stuff like that. Um, and the music was done by the Alf Lila team who did like Street Fighter 2 and Final Fight music and stuff so um, quite a pedigree there. Um, then there's Demon's Crest, um, another Capcom one. This is an action platform game starring Firebrand who's a kind of gargoyle that's in uh, Gargoyle's Quest and Gargoyle's Quest 2. This is the third one. These, these kind of spin-offs from Ghosts and Goblins, uh, Ghouls and Ghosts which we'll get to in a bit. Um, it's really good. It's a, it's a brilliant kind of platform game where you can kind of fly around. Uh, it's a fly, you can hover, uh, double tap the jump button. Um, it's also kind of Metroidvania game in a sense because there's bits where um, you can't access right away until you collect crests um, that give you extra power so then you can go back and reach them. So it's, it's, it's a genuinely brilliant game and I dare say it's one that most people haven't played. Um, so if you're looking for a kind of hidden gem to get started on, uh, that might be your best bet. Um, then there's F-Zero, um, a launch game uh, and uh, fantastic, one of the first uh, games to really show off Mode 7 which is the uh, SNES's kind of trademark graphic mode as you can see here. Mode 7 is basically an ability, it gives the SNES the ability to rotate and scale sp sp sprites really quickly. So a lot of racing games like F-Zero and Super Mario Kart and the like, um, the, the tracks are basically one big massive sprite. Uh, being rotated um, underneath you, so your car isn't actually moving, the, the road is moving underneath you. Um, and yeah, F0 is one of those, it's so fast, um, solid 60 frames a second, looks fantastic, and still holds up to this day, it's still great fun to play, so um, definitely another one to, to check out. Then there's Joe and Mac 2, Lost in the Tropics. Um, it's a fairly standard kind of action platformer with a couple of cavemen. Um, it's fun, I like the Joe and Mac games, it's, they're quite satisfying, they're really colourful, uh, well drawn characters, well animated. Um, it's, it's a weird one, if you're based in the UK or Europe um, and you remember this, you might remember it being called Joe and Mac 3. Um, that's because it was. <laughs> um, basically in America they called it Joe and Mac 2 but in Europe they called it Joe and Mac 3. And that's because there was a game called Congo's Caper, which was basically Joe and Mac, but with a monkey in it. Um, and obviously in America they decided that didn't count as Joe and Mac 2, uh, but in Europe they decided that counted, and so, either way. Joe and Mac 2 is, is the one you're getting <laughs> here, so enjoy that. 
Um, then there's Kirby's Dream Course, which is probably the weakest of the ones here in my opinion. It's, it's still a decent enough game, but it's not really my cup of tea. It's a kind of golf game starring Kirby where you've got to um, essentially fire him across a bunch of courses, hitting him in enemies. Um, it's it's an acquired taste, it's got a kind of cult following, but I am not part of that cult. I didn't drink the, the Kirby Kool-Aid in, on this occasion. Um, I did, however, with Kirby's Dream Land 3, which is also here. Um, which wasn't actually released in Europe, um, for, for whatever reason. We didn't get it until it came to the Wii Virtual Console, um, around about 2009-ish. Uh, that's when it first came out in Europe. Um, it's great, it's, it's a brilliant platformer. It's, it's obviously Kirby's got the usual stuff, he can float and he can swallow enemies and steal their abilities, but you can also team up with different kind of animal friends, like Rick the Hamster and stuff like that, and you can get other new abilities. It's, it's, it's typical Kirby, but um, so it's quite an easy game, but a, a really enjoyable one. Um, big heavy hitter next, The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. If you've never played this, then this is like... This is an education for you, <laughs> like all wrapped up. You just need to play this. Um, and just, if you're lucky enough that you've got this far without knowing much about it, get playing it now um, and just discover it because it's a sensational game. Especially when you think you've reached what looks like the game's natural end, and then it says, "No, actually, there's so much more to this game you don't know." Kind of flips you, flips you upside down. It's fantastic, um, an absolute classic. So it's great that it's on there too. Uh, Pilot Wings next. Um, I love Pilot Wings, especially the first one. Um, most people seem to more fondly remember Pilot Wings 64, and obviously you got Pilot Wings Resort um, on the 3DS more recently. But um, I've got a soft spot for the original Pilot Wings. Again, it was another kind of game to show off Mode 7, um, but it focused more on. It had a really strict scoring system, um, so the, the aim was to kind of get as close to 100 points for each. Um, license test as they called it, um, as you could, so you fly in a plane and a jetpack and a hang glider and, and all that kind of stuff. I, I love it, it's a fantastic game. Um, speaking of fantastic games, you've got Star Fox in here as well, uh, known as Star Wing in Europe. Star Fox is just... It's only kind of recently where this version has come, come back. The um, SNES Mini, uh, which came out a couple of years ago, was actually the first time uh, people got to play Star Fox again since it originally launched back in the SNES. So for a lot of people, Star Fox is the original Star Fox is still a kind of unplayed gem. You really need to play this. It's, it's you can tell by looking at it, it looks quite weird now. Um, it was a Super FX game. It used a special chip that can that let the SNES render kind of polygons, uh, but the frame rate was like three. <laughs> it's like this is a tiny frame rate. Um, so it looks quite choppy and really basic by today's standards, but there's something about it, it's just, it's still immensely playable, the music's incredible. Um, this is basically Miyamoto's Star Wars, um, and it's it's fantastic, it's still a great game. Um, Stunt Race FX is on there, which is a huge surprise for me, and, and personally one of my, uh, maybe the game I'm going to play first when, uh, when it launches. Um, this is the first time ever since it originally came out on the SNES that Stunt Race FX has been available to play again on a Nintendo system. Um, it was another Super FX game, but this time a racing game, um, in which the cars all kind of had wee personalities and looked like uh, characters. Um, and for whatever reason, maybe frame rate issues, maybe Nintendo decided it didn't, didn't look that great. Um, it's never been re-released since, yet it's a fantastic game. Um, in my opinion at least, so get stuck into that, Stunt Race FX, very um, rare for this game to kind of be, well it's rare, it's, it's, it's the second time it's ever been released, um, other than the original SNES game, so get stuck into that, I'm really excited about that one. Then there's Super Earth Defence Force, um, which has got nothing to do with the other Earth Defence Force games and the ones with the kind of giant alien bugs, there's like thousands of them all turn up in cities and groups, it's nothing to do with that, it's just a kind of standard shoot em up, um, although it's quite a difficult one. Um, so the re rewind feature which has been added to the SNES Online uh, service is, will be really useful in this one because otherwise you might struggle to get through it, um, so that's quite good. What else? Super Ghouls and Ghosts? That's a game and a half. Um, obviously Capcom first released Ghosts and Goblins and Ghouls and Ghosts. The Super Ghouls and Ghosts is essentially 
its own game. Um, it's probably the best in the series, I would say. It's still obscenely difficult like the other ones are, but it's slightly m more forgiving than, than um, its predecessors were, uh, which means it's a tiny bit less frustrating. It's still really difficult, but um, the amount of stuff you can do in this game is just... Um, it's great, and the soundtrack's fantastic, the enemies are brilliant. Um, if, if, if it's a challenge you're looking for, this is probably the hardest game of the 20 at launch, so um, Super Ghosts and Ghosts is the one you're going to want to start on, I would say. Um, Super Mario Kart Next, the, the, where Mario Kart all started, um, another Mode 7 game, um, fantastic uh, racing game. Uh, the, the a couple of kind of interesting features that never really carried on, like the fact that um, when you're racing on your own, um, CPU characters had their own individual power-ups, uh, their own individual items that they could use. So Donkey Kong threw banana, uh, sorry, Donkey Kong Junior threw bananas at you. Uh, Peach threw mushrooms to try and shrink you and stuff like that. It never really happened uh, after that. Everyone kind of got the same items, but there you go. It's got a great battle mode as well. Um, so you've got another player tagging along then you've got that to look forward to as well which is great. Uh, Super Mario World of, of course is going to be on it. Um, you can't have a um, any kind of Nintendo re-release system without Super Mario World being involved. Um, it's just one of the greatest games ever made so if by some miracle you've managed to get this far without um, playing it this is the time to change that. Just get torrent it. Enjoy the debut of Yoshi. Um, Enjoy 96 exits, not not, not 96 levels, which um, was often reported at the time. 96 exits, some levels have got more than one exit. Um, and see if you can find. I'll maybe do a guide video later on for those who are new to it or newer to it, uh, showing all the kind of weird stuff you can find in the game, like the Star Road and the ability to transform the entire game into a weird kind of Halloween world. Um, but that's for another time. And until then, if you've never played this, this is where to start. Really, <laughs> I've done obviously for about five games. This is the one to start. But um, if you're new to the SNES and these are all new, Super Mario World's where to start. Alternatively, you've got Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island, uh, which used the Super FX2 chip, a kind of advanced, um, enhanced version of Super FX. Um, and this is just, I mean, you just have to look at it to see how fantastic it is. It's all kind of um, done in a kind of felt tip style to make it look like it's all kind of illustrated. The, the story goes, and this is uh, its unknown whether this is true or not, that uh, when Miyamoto was uh, planning Yoshi's Island, um, Nintendo kind of demanded that it be done in a CGI style, kind of like Donkey Kong Country, um, because that was doing really well for them and Miyamoto was kind of so affronted by this and so angry that he deliberately made it look as childish and as weird and hand-drawn as possible and Nintendo basically said oh, we love it let's do it it's, I'm not sure whether that's the true story or not but that's that's how the story goes but you can tell by looking at it it looks sensational. Uh, Super Metroid next if if Star Fox was Nintendo's Star Wars then Super Metroid is Nintendo's Alien um, and it's just, it's a masterpiece. I mean, for for its age, considering this is early nineties, it's, it's it tells a fantastic story, um, and it's just I mean, there's a reason the genre is called Metroidvania, um, and Metroid was doing it before Vania was doing it, um, and this is although there was Metroid on the SNES, this is where it really properly came into its own. It's another superb game. Then there's Super Puyo Puyo 2. Um, I've never been a big fan of Puyo Puyo, Puyo uh, but there you go. I mean, some people like it. There's, there's, it's the only puzzle game so far at launch, so um, I'm sure puzzle fans will want to start there, maybe. Um, it's interesting in that it was only released in Japan. So this is the first time ever it's been released in the West, um, so that's good. Um, it also included a four-player mode, and it's going to be interesting to see if it's if you can play as four players here, I'm assuming you can because when they showed the SNES controller during the direct video, um, you saw the controller, it's wireless this time, and it's got four lights on it, which presumably indicate what player you are, so presumably it can be used for up to four players, so 
yeah, maybe. Unless they haven't put in multi-tap uh, functionality, it should it should work for four players. So we'll see. Um, so that could be good. That could be a kind of hidden gem there. Then there's Super Soccer. Um, similar to Stunt Race FX, this is the first time this has ever been made available since it launched. Um, and it launched in Europe alongside the SNES. It was a launch yeah, launch title here. Um, it was developed by Human Entertainment, a Japanese company. It was originally known as Super Formation Soccer in Japan. And then they, because football is such a big deal in Europe, they brought it over here for launch. Um, they had a bunch of sequels, but never made it outside of Japan. This is the only one we got. It's a great wee football game. It's, it's, it's not. There were better football games that came later. Uh, the original FIFA was better. I, ISS is incredible and I'm keeping my fingers and toes and everything crossed it um, ISS and ISS Deluxe make it on here eventually uh, but until then Super Soccer will do for now you need a football game um, and that'll do um, and then finally you've got Super Tennis which again is available for the first time since it came out on the SNES and again was a launch game in Europe um, made use of kind of Mode 7 at times uh, just for no real reason just to show off um, it's a great tennis game, it really holds up, the uh, controls are tight, um, you've got different types of shot on each button, it's, it's just a solid tennis game and, and multiplayer, it's, it's, it should be a great laugh. Um, and that's it, that's your 20 launch games, There's, there are so many games uh, that could come to this um, down the line that uh, will just make this service become even greater value for money over time. Um, obviously I'm I'm writing the book on it, <laughs> so um, as they announce more games, if you like, please do let me know in the comments if you want this. Um, every month when they announce new games I can do a short kind of update video explaining the new games if you want. Um, until then, get stuck in, let me know in the comments which games you're going to play, um, or, or if, let me know if any of these games you haven't played yet, especially the kind of classic Super Mario World, Star Fox, Super Metroid, etc. Um, kind of excited to hear about people discovering these games for the first time. Um, but until then, please do visit tyrolhack.com for all your gaming goodness, and do like and subscribe to this um, channel if you want more of the same in the future. Cheers guys, bye bye.